So maybe you've heard of this thing called CRISPR that scientists are using to edit genomes and change DNA. Well, today we're going to talk about what it is and how people are using it and then do our very own CRISPR experiment. Ready? Let's start by going over the basics of the CRISPR system. Every living thing contains DNA, and the genes that help make up that DNA are the instructions our bodies need to make proteins. Scientists studying DNA in bacteria noticed chunks of DNA that repeated themselves over and over in a row. They named these regions CRISPR regions, for clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. And in between those repeats were spaces of different DNA that they called spacers. Turns out, those spacers were DNA sequences from previous invading viruses, saved by the cells as tiny wanted posters, so that the next time the virus showed up, the cell would recognize it and know to chop up the invading DNA. The CRISPR regions were acting like an immune system for the cell, biting off attackers. And how would the cell chop up invading DNA? With the help of DNA-cutting Cas proteins, short for CRISPR-associated proteins, and RNA, a molecule that can carry DNA's messages throughout the cell. The cells transcribed spacer sequences into short pieces of RNA, which guided Cas proteins to matching targets. So when a returning virus invaded a cell, the matching RNA would guide a Cas protein to its DNA and chop it up. Scientists observed this system in bacteria and decided to turn it into a tool for precisely cutting DNA. By engineering their own RNA guides for the Cas protein, scientists could selectively target and cut any position in the DNA. And soon, scientists were modifying the system so that they could not just cut the DNA, but also make changes. When a gene is cut, the cell will try to repair it. Sometimes it does a good job, and other times it makes small mistakes, inserting or deleting extra small DNA sequences. These mistakes could alter the gene's protein product, leaving it broken or marking it for destruction. But if the researchers added a new DNA template when they cut, they could also encourage the cell to insert the new sequence, adding new genes or making intended changes. Scientists continue to look for new Cas proteins and to modify the ones they are already working with to turn genes on or off in all kinds of different systems, from bacteria to fish to human cells. This lets them ask lots of questions about how genes and proteins work and what jobs they do. And now it's time to try a CRISPR experiment for ourselves. Here I've got some yeast. My friends at the Stanford at the Tech program have already placed DNA into this yeast that will code for both a Cas protein and a guide RNA. The guide RNA is designed to target a gene that helps to process a certain molecule in the cell. If the gene is broken, the molecule will build up and turn red, causing the yeast to turn red. In these yeast, the CRISPR system is attached to a kind of switch that can be turned on by adding a molecule called galactose, or gal. Now to show this in action, we'll split our yeast into two tubes. In one tube, we'll add gal to turn the CRISPR system on and cut the gene. Hopefully this will create red yeast. In the other tube, we'll leave the CRISPR system off. So as you can see, in the yeast where we didn't turn CRISPR on, all the colonies are white. But in the yeast where we did, we have a mixture of red and white colonies. So CRISPR cut and disabled the gene in those red ones. So now that we know the basics of how CRISPR works, let's talk to some other grad students on campus to see how they're using CRISPR to ask questions in their research. So I study how CRISPR systems allow bacteria to defend themselves against nasty things like viruses. The way a CRISPR system learns how to fight off a virus, let's say, right, is to steal a little piece of information from the virus and then store it um, in, in a safe place. And people thought that this stealing of information only happened from DNA. And what we've done is we've found a CRISPR system 
and potentially a whole class of them, where that information can be stolen out of RNA molecules. So that expands the range of things that the system might be able to defend the bacteria from. I use CRISPR to study genetic cardiovascular diseases, so diseases of the heart. I study a disease called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a really long word that basically just means that a part of your heart is larger than it should be. And you would think that a big change like this might be caused by uh, something that's gone, gone terribly wrong in the genome, but it's actually usually just really tiny little changes in the DNA, one, one little letter. And so what I do is I grow heart cells in a dish, and I actually use CRISPR to go in and make those tiny little changes, um, and then I look to see how those change the cells and therefore how they cause the disease. I use CRISPR to study fat metabolism. So when you eat butter or oils, um, you metabolize that into energy. And some people don't have the ability to do that. So we want to know what's going on when you don't have the ability to do that. Um, so I'm using CRISPR in flies to create a fly model organism of the human disease where you can't metabolize fat. I use CRISPR to study proteins that read marks on DNA. So I'm uh, using a dead version of the Cas9 enzyme that does not cut. This DCAS9 is fused to a protein that will serve as a roadblock to see what happens if we block the action of those reader proteins uh, at a specific genomic location. I use CRISPR to study limb regeneration. Because I'm interested in limb regeneration, uh, we specifically use organisms that are able to regenerate full tissues and full limbs. Um, and so the organism that I'm concerned with is uh, the tadpole. And tadpoles are awesome because you can chop off their tail and then within a week they actually regrow um, a full tail and you can't actually tell the difference between a tadpole that's been injured versus a tadpole that's recovered. And so what we use CRISPR for is to study um, key genes or key factors that we think are playing a huge role in regeneration. We are not knocking out a gene, we're just blocking its activity for a couple of hours. Um, and that's unique in the CRISPR system that I'm working with, um, but a lot of people are applying these methods as well. Is that unique in the CRISPR system you're working with because you made that CRISPR system? I did make that CRISPR system, yeah, yeah. But that's another advantage of CRISPR is that it offers people an opportunity to play around with uh, the original system. What's so cool about CRISPR uh, and molecular biology in general is that you have the ability to um, manipulate something the way you would just manipulate dough as if you were kneading it, but it's actually the code of life of every living thing. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I think the coolest part of working on CRISPR is just how quickly things change in this field. I mean, there were a lot of people all across the world who were studying these things, and we didn't really know why studying them was important. And all of a sudden, it becomes this, you know, absolutely world-transforming discovery. And the people just carried on doing what they do best, right? This is, the, 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 I've been to so many conferences with them, right? These are the nicest, most diligent, hardworking people that you'll ever meet, right? Like, and, and they're so helpful. And every month there's a new discovery that I get to open up on my computer and read. And it's just so exciting because, because you know, in any other field, I guess things might take so much longer to, to move forward. But because there's so much interest around this uh, field right now, um, it's, it's just really exciting. So now we know what CRISPR is, how it works, how scientists are using it, and what it's like to do a CRISPR experiment in the lab. So next time you hear the word CRISPR, you'll be able to jump in with all the knowledge. This video would not have been possible without the help and support of so many different people. First and foremost, the Google Making and Science team and their hashtag Science Goals campaign. Without them, absolutely none of this would have happened. Also, my friends at the Stanford at the Tech program, Barry and Lauren and Kevin and Justin, who both made and then shared this yeast with me so that I could show this experiment to you. Huge, huge thanks to them. Also, the graduate students who let me sit down with them and pepper them with all kinds of science questions, so many of which I did not get to share in this video, but will be coming at you soon. So huge, huge thank yous to everybody involved and also to you guys for watching and sharing. It means so much to me when you share my videos with other people. It makes me feel like maybe I'm doing a little something right here. 
go forth and do science. Are you not gonna ask me what CRISPR stands for? Cause I like came up with the best acronym. Oh wait, yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me. Okay, I anticipated you were gonna ask me like, what does CRISPR uh, what stand for? And like nobody would be able to answer it. Uh, I looked it up, so I'm cheating. But instead, my original answer was uh, clearly really important, what was it? Clearly really important stuff people research. Clearly, really important stuff people research, which is a much better acronym than clustered, what is it? Clustered, regularly, interspa- All of those words mean the same thing. Clearly, really important stuff people research. That is the thing. <laughs> you can enjoy that. I'm so happy.